Hello, welcome to uh, this second part of the tutorial of uh, how to create a web app in uh, Java EE and uh, with a servlet and the GSP. So uh, the new part two here is uh, where we would like to use MySQL to uh, verify the credentials for the user. So in, in the first uh, in the first version, um, all, all the program could do was that if we uh, if we uh, run it here in uh, on a Tomcat application server. If I try to, sh to test and I uh, log in here on my login.jsp page, I log in with my username and password and then I uh, type login. And then it says dear and then my, my user credential and then it uh, reveals my very secret password here. Of course, we should never have it public. But anyway, so so the way uh, the application works here is uh, that I have um, in my source files here, I have a login uh, page, and uh, then I created uh, an app layer package, and I created a, a user class. And in the user class, I, I hard coded uh, my, my user credentials, my, my login and my password here. So um, I, I didn't I didn't look it up in any in, in any database or anything, but I just hard coded the, uh, everything. So what I want to do now is uh, in this next part of the tutorial uh, is that I, I would actually like to uh, create a schema in MySQL, um, and I want to create a simple table that can hold uh, users. Then I want to insert some test users, and uh, and then I want to set it up so I can access it from uh, from Java. And uh, in order to do that, I need to install a, a JDBC connector file, a JAR file I, I need to download and, uh, and install, put in, in the right place. And then I want to next, uh, I want to extend my web application. So I create a Java class uh, that can actually check the user credentials against the database. So, um, so that's the plan for this uh, second part of, um, of my demo. And I want to divide it into uh, to two recordings. The first one is uh, how I want to create uh, the table and, and set up the database, the schema in MySQL. And then in the second part, I want to change the web application uh, to then uh, look up in, in the database. And uh, I just want to run over the prerequisites that's needed. Of course, you, you needed to have completed the first part of the tutorial. And uh, I can drop uh, a link to GitHub. So if you don't have the code, you can take it from there, or you can you can go to the the previous part one. Then you need, of course, IntelliJ Ultimate in order to uh, to uh, to program the in Java, and Apache Tomcat application server, and uh, the Java uh, development kit JDK. And then as a new thing, we need to download uh, this uh, official connector for JDBC driver for MySQL. And uh, I, I put a link here. And uh, and then as the last thing, you need uh, MySQL installed. Um, actually, you need, of course, MySQL um, server, a database server. And also you need some kind of interface to work with the database. And I have used uh, Workbench. So let's get started creating a schema in MySQL. So I will go to my MySQL workbench. I want to access my local instance and uh, I need to log in here. Good. So the first thing I want to, I want to create uh, a new schema and I'll, I'll do it by clicking this icon here. And uh, my new schema, I want to call it a uh, web app tutorial. And uh, I need some kind of uh, a default collection, and uh, I think I want to go for UTF-8, and uh, I'll I'll choose a Danish version because I'm Danish, and I want to have it a case insensitive, and um, that's it. So I'll say apply, and apply the SQL, and now I have a new schema called a web app tutorial here, and uh, the first thing I need is I want to create a table, a new table. So I double uh, right click and I say create table. And uh, the name of the table would be uh, users. Uh, I'll call it that. And uh, then the first column here is, I just call it ID and it's an integer and it, it's a primary key, uh, PK, NN means uh, not null, not nullable. And uh, then I wanna have auto increment clicked here. So this is just uh, um, the primary key and I want it to automatically 
uh, increment by one every time I add a new user. Then I say uh, username, and uh, let's have just a, um, a varchar, and I'll let it be, and it has to be uh, an email address. So let's just have it for 45 characters. And then the next thing here is uh, user password. And I'll have a varchar as well, maybe make it a bit smaller, let's say 20. And uh, also this one has to be not null. So um, I'll just keep it like this for now, and, uh, and then I'll say apply. And here you see that the workbench creates actually the create table SQL, and I'll apply it. And now here in my web app tutorial, uh, if I say tables, I click this, I have these columns here. So what I want to do now, if I click the users table, uh, I can move in here and then I can create a, my first entry into the table. Uh, my user password, I could just call it test123. And uh, I could make another one, test test decay and I'll have this test123 password. Okay, so um, all I need now is to apply these changes and uh, and then again MySQL created these two insert statements. I'll say apply, close, and uh, if I say select star from web app tutorial users, you can see now that I have two rows in my table. And, uh, and that, that will surface for, uh, for this demo. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to create a, a specific user uh, that I want to use in my Java application uh, to access this particular schema called Web App Tutorial. And it's always a good idea not to use uh, the root user. So I'll go up here and say database, uh, no, sorry, server, users and privileges, and uh, I'll add an account. I say add account here, and this new one here, I want to call it um, here, web app user. And uh, I need to, uh, to type in a password. I'll just call it test123, test123, just for this uh, example here. And uh, you could actually say, uh, instead of star here, uh, limits to hosts matching, I could say just local host, if I only wanted to uh, be accessible from, from my local machine here. And then as the last thing I want to uh, have a look at is schema privileges. I can say add entry. And then in here, I want to say that uh, I only want the schema web app tutorial uh, to be accessible with this uh, particular user. And in here, I can say I actually also only want to have a select. Um, you can only select from this uh, schema with this particular user. So now I'm, I'm pretty sure that no one will come and uh, and access this. Uh, I did some kind of mistake here. Let's test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Apply. Okay. That's it. So now I have my user. It's called Web App User. And uh, now my database is actually ready to be uh, accessed from, from Java. Th uh, the last thing I would like to do is uh, if I go to the users here and I select the rows, I just want to uh, check out uh, later on from Java when I'm going to uh, uh, test my user credentials. I want to say select, let's say it could be just star from web from users. Uh, where, and then I would say uh, maybe user name equals Yonbe Kia DK, and a user password equals test one two three. Okay, so if I run this one, it will single out. Uh, the only match there is, so that would be my my particular username and password. If I if I change this to two instead, and I do this, it it'll come out empty. So um, so this particular select statement here, select star from uh, users where username equals, and then 
whatever you choose here, should be sort of a template for what I'm going to use in uh, my web application in, when I want to look up uh, the user credentials in the database. So I just want to keep this for now. And uh, this is uh, the end of the first part of the tutorial. So then you can go to the second part where I want to uh, where I want to implement uh, the the database access in my web app tutorial.